Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Just Energy Transition Partnership that South Africa is pursuing with a number of developed countries came under the spotlight again this week. Terence Greenman joins me to discuss where the deal may be heading. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Why was there this renewed interest in the so-called JP this week? This Just Transition Partnership was sort of the highlight of the COP26 uh, climate talks. Uh, um, back in November in Glasgow and the president of COP26, Alok Sharma of the UK, was in South Africa this week to get an update on progress with regard to the what is being called the JET-P uh, by the partners now and that's the Just Energy Transition Partnership and we know there's this political declaration and within that there's this offer of 8.5 billion dollars for South Africa uh, to help South Africa transition from its coal-based economy to a more renewables-led economy. And uh, this would be also to support uh, the lives and livelihoods of coal miners and coal communities and coal businesses, or businesses that are linked to the coal value chain, that are vulnerable to this transition. So this is why the spotlight was back on, on the Jet P, and uh, there was these discussions uh, at very high level. Uh, seven ministers met with Alok Sharma. Uh, he met with um, the, the Presidential Climate Commission. Uh, he met with union leaders, spe specifically the National Union of Mine Workers who were part of that meeting. He visited Eskom's Mwati Power Station, which is one of the sites that has been uh, earmarked for some of these just energy transition projects. And he met for, with the, the Presidential Climate uh, Team and the secretariat that's been set up, led by South Africans. So that was a, a visit and many meetings, and that's really why so much more attention, again, has been put on the Jet P. The key next step seems to be all about the investment plan. Yes, so now the next acronym is the Jet P R P, <laughs> the Jet, uh, the, the Just Energy Transition Partnership Investment Plan. And here what the emphasis is that it must be a South African-led plan. So South Africans must come up with a plan that uh, has the buy-in of the public and of its institutions and of government. And it must present this now to the other partners. And we know those other partners are, you know, the European Union is part of it, but it's, it's the UK, it's the US, it's France, and it's, it's Germany that have said that they're going to give this uh, 8.5 billion. And, but it needs a project portfolio to invest in. So there's a lot of work underway currently to look at what should be part of that investment plan. We know that most of it has to be around South Africa's electricity economy or electricity supply industry, mostly because that's where uh, our emissions are already concentrated. We have a, a big, big coal fleet run by Eskom. It's a failing coal fleet on top of, top of it. So part of the virtue of, uh, of this transition is hopefully to try and stabilize South Africa's electricity system as we migrate to a cleaner electricity system. So we know that electricity and different components of electricity will be part of that. Solar, wind and the grid are big components but there could be also storage components to this. But we need to see that investment pipeline, uh, that project pipeline out of the electricity sector. And we know that government has also asked that the electric vehicle manufacturing and green hydrogen production be put under the aegis of the Jet P. Uh, so th there will be also projects around th th those, uh, those two areas. But I think the big focus uh, and the big area of attention will be the, the project pipeline around the electricity sector. And that will be the big next step. And there's been a few uh, sort of uh, milestone dates that have been given. So that by July, we should have a draft investment plan and then by uh, October a revise of that draft and then the big f uh, sort of line in the sand is the November COP27 which is taking place in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt and it's an African COP and they want to have uh, the Dross Transition Investment Plan in South Africa which is this flagship uh, Jet P and there are probably going to be a number of these Jet P's emerging around the world from these developed uh, countries but this is the flagship one and the first one, and they would like to have a proper announcement with proper projects uh, announced in Egypt later this year. Other projects and finance could be bundled under the JP banner in future. Yes, we know that you know that it's a moving target because there's a lot of project 
and progress that's been happening in parallel uh, to the JetP and I think will be crowded in under this banner of JetP. For instance, we know what Eskom has been doing at Kumati. They've been preparing the way for a number of projects at Kumati and that will be repowering and repurposing projects. So repowering would be to use that power station site and especially its ability to connect into the, the grid uh, to not produce necessary electricity from coal, well definitely not from coal, but to for instance have a solar phot photovoltaic and possibly a wind component. Uh, around the site there's a lot of land and there's agrovoltaic type opportunities there that can be fairly job intensive and then there'll be definitely a, a possibility to use those facilities to manufacture microgrids that can be rolled out into areas that are hard to connect uh, to bring electricity to those communities both in South Africa and the region and Eskom has a microgrid uh, solution it's basically solar panels and batteries and containers that they have rolled out in a few places so th that's some of the projects that could be part of and that predated although and but has been brought under the the aegis of JetP and those projects it sounds like some of them might be go before the World Bank board prior to COP27 and we might actually see funding approved by the World Bank for some of those commodity related projects but they will be crowded in and then there's other countries um, that want to also maybe enter this partnership so other developed countries because we know that climate finance is a commitment to doing climate, climate finance at a certi certain yearly rate which the developed countries have promised all, all the way back in 2011 they haven't been meeting those commitments so this is one way if, there's a, if there is a framework that for other partners, other development countries that are not part of the, the sort of an immediate uh, um, international partner group to join in. And then there's also philanthropists that want to join. So this provides a framework for that. So we may see projects ahead of COP27 that uh, have been developed. Also, we know the Germans are quite involved in supporting uh, green hydrogen uh, initiatives in South Africa. Those could also happen prior to COP and may also be bundled under this, this broader partnership. So uh, we could see this extended. And then obviously for this international partnership group, they want to use this as a template that they can then take to other countries in Africa and Asia and uh, South America. So this will be the first, but I think that at COP27 we may see a number of jet peas announced with other countries, not only South Africa. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.